Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to Breakfast with Champions. We're so excited to have you. Uh, before we get started, I, I would like you guys to go ahead and, and uh, reach out, share this post. We want as many people to join as possible. I've shared mine, um, and I'm excited to get started today with you on Thursday the 10th. i um, super excited to be with my brother, Andrew. Um, so happy to share this time in general overall on oh. Thursdays. Amen. 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 Well, let's go ahead and get, get started in prayer. And then I'll, I'll hand it over to, to Andrew to get us get us rolling in, in, uh, in what we'll be talking about today. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I just come to you right now and I just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, would be ministering to each and every person right where they are. Lord, whether in their bedroom, they're in their, their office, whether they're, they're in, you know, on the couch sipping coffee, I pray, God, that you would just call people in this morning, allow them to just be refreshed uh, by fellowship, Lord, by your word, by, by, by conversations. I pray, God, that you would open up the door, the windows of heaven, Lord, pour out so much a blessing that we just can't have room for it. And we just uh, proclaim all goodness, grace, and mercy uh, upon this morning, upon this day. We ask, Lord, for your favor, Lord, whether it be at work, whether it be at home, Lord, whether it be at the shopping center, Lord, I know people are getting ready for go back to school. So I pray, God, that you would just minister to each and every one of us this morning in your holy name, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right. All right, Andrew, what are we talking about today? Man, we're, we're, we're talking about how life changes through prayer. And you know that. I'm going to stay on script, but like the quarterback that I was when I was playing football, I got to call a little bit of honorable. Go ahead, go ahead. We, we were supposed to go silence, learning, and connecting, but there was something that I was looking at with Timothy because, you know, we talked about Timothy. We right, talked right. about relationships last night. And something hit me. I mean, just knocked me off my feet. From an early age, Timothy put his faith in the Lord. Acts 16, 1. 2 Timothy 1 and 5. Timothy saw this sincere trust in God first modeled by his grandmother, Lois. In turn, she imparted that faith to her daughter, Eunice, who then passed it on to her son, Timothy. Watch this. Andrew saw this fear trust in God, first modeled by his grandmother, Gloria, who passed away two months before he was born. In turn, though, she imparted that faith to her daughter, Renata, who then passed it on to her son, Andrew. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. Wait a minute. Amen. Gloria. Hold on. Wait. Glory. Glory. Gloria, glory be to God. Amen. Go ahead. On. The faith, who was a Sunday school teacher, mm -hmm. to Renata, who then passed it on to her son, Andrew, who was the first disciple to be called. Mm -hmm call people to call on Jesus and follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Amen. How that just for some learning in itself that 
what you're doing right now, mm. where you are right now, is going to translate to generations following you, coming with you, bringing out the best in you, even when you didn't know that it was going to be so I just oh Zach oh I, I, I gotta let you take it from here that that just oh it almost brought tears and almost put me on my behind amen on the floor yeah amen, amen. hey well you're talking about general generational blessings right I mean that's what that's the whole thing of what happened with Timothy and, and, and what that brought him to was a mentorship with one of the greatest, one of the greatest men in the Bible, Paul, you know, and, um, and, and that, that's, that's a huge blessing of itself that leading into, you know, in, into growth, your generational blessing from, from passed down believers. Um, I, I know that, that if it wasn't for, for, you know, an old Baptist preacher in Staxi, Texas, coming and interacting <laughs> with my dad, you know, and, and, and intervening in his life to show him the way, the truth in life. If, if, if that didn't happen because he didn't have parents that were involved in church or God or anything like that. And, um, and, you know, if, if he would have gotten that connection, then there's, uh, most likely I wouldn't have been raised up in the church and I, and then I wouldn't have been put into a position to find mentors and, and people to develop me. And, uh, you know, I mean, generational blessings are, 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 it's so important that if you didn't have it, but you found it, you've, you found the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus, and you've, you've committed your life to Christ. You are creating in your family in your line, now a generational blessing that starts with you. So yeah. it doesn't matter if you've been blessed to already have that generational blessing to come up onto you, or or if you're that praying grandmother that that that's received God's grace for yourself, and now that generation now it's 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 breeding more blessings through your family line, um, and that 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 in itself is is a miracle. You know, that generational connection is a miracle. Yes, I, man, I, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I was at the church yesterday and I call it Distribution Wednesday mm -hmm. uh, because we have a couple of food banks uh, that come through the church that people can be fed in and we receive a lot of pallets of food, of resources, of different things that come into the church. Um, and so watch this, four generations, right? Mm -hmm. Four generations, okay? My grandmother, Sunday school teacher, my mother always prayed for me, even when I was running the streets, doing this, doing that, whatever, whatever. Then both those two beautiful girls, they're with me at the church yesterday at the gym, right? Mm -hmm. One of the ladies that's helping feeding the, the Tarrant County area comes to me, knocks on my office door. My door is open, but she's still knocking while I'm reading my Bible. I pause for a second. She says, hey, coach. Because everybody knows me as coach. They don't know me. They don't know me. Everyone knows me as coach. <laughs> but they, uh, she knocks on the door and she says, hey, I would love for your daughter to be a part of my leadership program. We have this call, this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. So, grandma, mama, son, daughter. just like that and yeah. i've been reading my word and i've been studying lineage 
and mm-hmm. name that nature recently. And again, that goes back to learning. If you don't know what you're reading, if you don't know what your lineage is, what your legacy is, if you don't pray about the understanding of who you really are, not just who you really are, but who you really are, Mm -hmm. then life has no meaning. Life has no purpose. You don't know and understand. You don't gain the knowledge and the wisdom Mm -hmm. for you to be able to grow and move forth in the way that you're supposed to grow. Because when we speak these words, when we speak that comes out of our mouth, it can either be one of two things, a gift or a curse. Mm -hmm. I can speak a curse right now. And I can say, oh, y'all. Or I can say, oh, y'all. It can go one of two ways. Positivity, mm-hmm. negativity, but they cannot live in the same space. Mm-hmm. You have dark and you have light. And yeah. sometimes you have to go into darkness, into mm-hmm. a space, into an empty space where no one is around mm-hmm. so that you can actually open your ears up to learn. And that goes back to the silence. And so I like to uh, model my prayer life, and I would suggest to others, even if you're not praying, but model your life like Jesus. Get behind those doors, get up on a mountain, get away from some people, Mm -hmm. go and be silent. Yeah. Go quiet and listen Mm -hmm. and you'll learn the silence and listening helps to learn what it is that you're being called on to do who you're being called on to help how you're being called on to do it how you're being called on to help and sometimes it's going to pop up. It's going to show up in a way that you never could have imagined. Mm-hmm. Never. And man, I just, I, I see the life of Jesus. And I'm right. like, man, that's like a lonely life at times. Mm-hmm. But he learned a lot. Shared yeah. a lot. i wisdom and understand yeah yeah no i mean silence talking about silence um you know there's a lot there's a lot to be said about being still you know god tells us to be still and know that he is lord you know um and and you know not to be impatient while in silence you know while while waiting on on him I think sometimes we get so caught up in doing, 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 doing that if we don't feel like we're doing something, we're not doing anything. And <laughs> and, and, oh, and really, really honestly, when we when we do take the time to separate ourselves from our distractions, because everything that's going on in our lives is really overall a big distraction from our relationship with Christ. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like Mary and Martha, you know, Mary and Martha were you know, two, two favored, you know, women of God that Christ came to visit and he visited their house, you know, and, and, you know, Mary sat down at his feet and just, and just listened to him and just waited on him, you know, was there. And Martha was running around, you know, worrying about, worrying about the stuff, you know, worrying about everything being in order and I think that sometimes we think that life has to be in order for us to settle down and really give God that time. But that's really the best time to give God is because it allows us a rest that I think that we all need in our day to day life struggles. And, um, and, and I think that that's why he encouraged Martha, Martha, listen, you know, 
come on, come on and, and, and sit down with me. You know, Mary's chosen the wiser thing. You know, you, you have you have my presence here available for you. Why don't you take the time to just be silent, just to listen and just to hear what I have to say to you? Because so so often we want to tell God how we feel, what we want, you know, where we want to go, what we want to do. And he's like, well, I, I just want to talk. I just want to talk to you, you know, and you're not giving me that room to speak into your life and to um, really give you the direction that you need to go. And, um, and so I, I think that's, that's important that we recognize the importance of, of being quiet, waiting on God in prayer, not just, you know, jumping the gun and, and, and saying, well, if things aren't happening, happening, you know, then God isn't moving. God is moving in the silence. God is moving in the, in the waiting and um, and we have to we have to be patient enough to recognize that he wants to speak to us in those times. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I get I, as a minister, you get caught up in the work of ministry. And a lot of times you just have to take take maybe even within the work, take moments to rec recognize, hey, this is a good time for me to to open up in prayer or if i'm having a conversation with somebody and i'm feeling the holy spirit say hey you know y'all need to go into prayer do that you know take action on that but but really waiting in the silence is 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 a good thing as long as it's productive it's it's you're you're in silence for a purpose to serve god rather than rather than to wallow in self-pity doubt fear that's that's you know that's the enemy we want to be in a place of of really worship in silence amen hey man man it is so divinely ironic yesterday i was training a young his father is named Pete, but his name is peter his name is Adam, hmm. and I'm standing there, and oh, he's going through it. Oh, oh yeah. I'm in him hard. I'm wearing him out, and I shared with him: if you just get one percent better every day for a year, how much better do you get? 365% better. Mm -hmm. But sometimes getting better is actually sitting down recovering. Mm -hmm. It's sitting down studying, watching your film, or AKA reflecting or reminiscing on your life, what you've done the film of your life, looking at the film of others and who came before you. Legacy generation, really studying. You know, kicking back, sit your feet up, mm -hmm. right? Amen. Get by yourself and just, mm. and or get with some folks. See, mm -hmm. a lot of people think you got to be silent by yourself. Nah, right. you can go sit down around some folk and not say a word mm -hmm. and learn a whole mm -hmm. lot. Amen. You can learn a whole lot. It's my, it's my belief that, you know, Jesus had his inner circle. Mm -hmm. when, he, when he sat down with his inner, inner circle, come on, sometimes you can't tell me that they weren't just sitting there like, all right. What you got for me today? <laughs> right, right. 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 We just, we just, hey, you know what? 
I'm just gonna sit here. I'm just, I'm just, hey. God. I'm here with Jesus being silent, learning how to, how about this? How to be patient. Mm. Learning how to be still. Learning how to have spiritual ears. Learning how to just be in me. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times, what I what I see is we want to move, 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 move. We live in such a busy world mm. that we're trying to keep up with somebody that can't even keep up with themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you sit back and you just hold on. Because that the room ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Amen. We are. Amen. Right. That's good. The room ain't going nowhere. We, we, hey, hey, we. You know, whoever's whoever's watching, we just had to had to sit for a moment and just pause, right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. But it's still connecting. So we're talking about silence, learning, and connecting in prayer. Mm hmm. Sometimes we don't have to say anything to be in prayer. Yeah. yeah. Besides be silent. Mm -hmm. in, in internally. Mm -hmm. We just boom, we hear. Silent. Learning internally. And that helps us to connect with not only a higher spirit, mm -hmm. but that helps us to connect with ourselves and in turn helps us to connect with others to where they can learn from us, we can learn from them, mm -hmm. we can close our mouths and be silent and continue to grow and move forward. You, you know, you, you make a good point on, on connecting. Um, with one of the things Christ said in Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verses 29, he says, take my yoke upon, upon you and, and learn from me. A yoke is, is, you know, is, is a, is a device that was used to hold two oxen. And he's saying, he's saying my yoke is easy because he said, I'm carrying the weight for you. Learn from me, learn from me. As I carry that weight for you, watch me as I carry that weight for you. Trust me while I carry that weight for you. Um, and and I'll, 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 all going back to learn from me. Watch what I do. I promise you I'm, I'm simplifying it for you. I think we, we, we kind of think that everything has to be difficult in our learning process. Like if I'm not like completely overwhelmed and, and trying to try to fight through the process of life, if I'm not doing that, then I'm not effective. Or, you know, or I'm not learning. That's not necessarily true. Christ is saying, hey, watch, watch what I do. Follow me. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. And I'll teach you. You know, I'll teach you. Um, Philippians chapter four, verse nine says, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me. This is this is Paul speaking to the Philippines. Uh, Philippians. He says, whatever you've heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Um, we've got to start. I think so. So often, too, people are in, in this process of learning and learning and learning. Uh, they they become consumers, uh, but they don't put out any product. Oh, don't you talk to me like that? Don't do. Don't well, do. You know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, you got you got you got doers and you got sayers, and and you know, people can say a lot, but they don't do a lot, and. You, you've got to put into practice, Paul was saying, you've got to put into practice what you've seen, heard, received, learned. All of that has to be put out. Jesus says, my yoke is easy, but guess what? You learn from me to do something 
with me. You use what I've gifted you, what I've planted inside you. You use that. And if you're not using that, then really um, you're robbing yourself. You're robbing yourself of blessings. You're robbing yourself and you're robbing others of being blessed by you. So if there is a gift that you have been, you've allowed fear to rob you of using, God has taught you, you have learned and received the gifts, you have learned and received teaching, you have learned and received mentorship, but you're not implementing what you have received, you're not practicing what has been preached to you, then you are missing out on opportunities to not only be a blessing to others, but also be blessed yourself. And I think that so so often we get into a place of, of this of this devouring, but no sharing, and and, and we lose out. I, I, you know, we, we get you know, as the word says, we get fat on the word, but we don't make we, we don't do anything with it. It's like you're useless. Stop being useless in your prayer life, in your uh, in your you know learning, because you're learning for the sheer purpose of sharing. And um, one of the things I think that everybody should seek after is, is boldness. We need boldness in this, in this day and age. In order for us to be a product of what God wants to do in this generation, we have to ask God for not only the teaching, but the boldness to practice what we've been taught in order that other people learn as well. Paul said, listen, you're, you're sipping on the milk like babies when you should be teachers yourselves why aren't you doing something with what you've been gifted with you know um, if there's anybody on the back pew and you've been on the back pew for 50 years it's time to get up and do something i i don't care if it's if it's working in your in the nursery ministry you know with the babies do something that is that is edifying the church that is building up you know others so that so that again the manifestation of learning is now is now not only done for you it's done through you and uh, and that's where connection comes through if if you're not willing to connect with people and I, i'm 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 really andrew I'm, I'm right now i'm god has taught me this lesson is is that as a pastor when i first started i'm going to be completely you know, transparent. When I first started in ministry or pastoring the seven years that I was at New Beginning in White House, um, I I had this audacious belief that my gift, I, I really took the, your gift makes room for you to a whole nother level. I was like, I was like, it, it only, only make room for me. Like people should be coming in, filling the room, for me because my gift is that good and yeah, god has yeah. taught me over the years that that listen if you young man don't connect with people they're yeah. not in what you say or your gift or your ability so if you think that you're just going to with without any work or making connections and building relationships that anybody's going to care a thing about your gift you're sadly mistaken because they're not. They're not going to care about your gift until they know how much you care. I'm sure you've heard that that, that saying. Oh yeah. Um, and so, so you know, I, I now that I've gotten this second opportunity to to be a pastor and to to and I've grown, I, I believe. Um, God's, God's shown me, listen, Zach, I need you to go back to the basics of connecting with people. And, uh, and you've got to start over. And mm. I said, okay, well, uh, how do I do that? And he said, I want you to go to people's houses. I want you to knock on doors. And so mm. on Tuesday, I did just that. And I, and I went door to door and, you know, and, and just knocked on doors that, that were close nearby the house and knocked on the doors and said, said, listen, I'm, my name is Zach. I'm, I'm the new pastor in White House here, right down the street. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the church owner. And, um, you know, I'm just here to serve you. Like if you have a home church, please 
honor that. I'm not trying to take anybody from their church, um, but if you don't have a church, please, you know, I would I would love for you to be my my personal guest. And um, and you know, you talked about earlier dealing with curses and blessings, and 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 I really, it's crazy because again, your what you've been taught. And through action of connection, you you find where those that are are re receptive to you in your your attempt to make connections, that becomes such a huge blessing to them and to you. Um, and and the the other the other side of that coin is those that reject you. Just as Christ had sent out the the two by two, he said he said go two by two. Yeah. Minister in the streets. When he when when he said that, he also told them, anybody that that receives you will will be blessed. Leave your blessing with that house. Anybody mm. that rejects you, you leave as a curse. You, you dust off your feet and you walk away. And um, and I remember I, there was there was at least one house I was invited into. They, they, the first house I visited, uh, God knew that it was one of those things that I had to be kind of comforted in. in the first house, they invited me in the house and we had caught, they, they brought me coffee. They served me. They, we, 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 we talked. Um, the next house that I went to, um, when I knocked on the door, lady came and she, she looked very annoyed. And I said, I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just, I, I'm just offer my, my services to you for free. I just wanted to invite you to our church. And, and when I went to go shake her hand, she, 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 she folded her arms and said, I'm not going to shake your hand. And I, and I, and I, I felt, you know, you feel jaded, you know, you feel like, she's like, I already go to church. I said, well, you need to either go to another one or, you know, you know I don't know what's going on. <laughs> And, uh, you know, you're not really, you're not really exemplifying Christ, but, but I, I, you know, I walked away from that feeling that feeling that, you know, that's going to come back to her in one way or another. Um, unfortunately, and I say that unfortunately, because I, I, I would hate for it to be even, you know, even at the end where, where, you know, God shows her in heaven, listen, I sent this minister to your house and you rejected him. Mm. And that is a curse. That would be a curse to me if if, yeah. if that was the case. Yeah. Um, I remember somebody saying, "Well, you know, Zach, I don't I don't have to worry about going to hell because I know that if I go to hell, you know, I, you know, you'll 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 pull me out." And I said, "Man, I can't pull you out after it's over. It's over. Like when it's done, it's done." I said, "But my hand is in hell for you right now," and uh, and I said, uh, "You know," and so so really. You know, making the connections, it, it's you, you've got to take you've got to take um, making a connection with others, at least not with God. God is always open and receptive to us. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but with others, you know, you, you can't be afraid of rejection because there's going to be people that reject you. But you also have to come into making those connections through um, genuine a genuine heart. If you're if you're not walking in ministry of others with a genuine heart and saying, "Listen, I, I'm I'm here to serve you, whether you receive me or not. If you don't receive me, I, I respect that, and I'll, I'll move on." And um, and God can still work with those people that do reject you, and and you have to walk away from. Maybe you're not the one, you know. Maybe you're not the one that that, that God needs to use specifically for this person. And I can accept that as a minister. I can understand that there's other pastors that will relate better or have a different style of. I always, I always uh, uh, get sometimes concerned about my style of of preaching, and I think, okay, maybe I'm a little over the top for some people. But you know what? Some people, some people have to have it that way. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to receive receive the word. And so, I have to be very. Um, understanding to the fact that I might not always be somebody's cup of tea, but that I am somebody's cup of tea and I am there for somebody's connection to God. And, um, and I think that that's important for us to understand that you, you individually have a 
an ability to connect with people and influence to influence certain people uh, in and around your circle that you have to recognize I've got to take I've got to take that chance I've got to take that risk and uh, they might not receive me but if they do I promise you not only will you be blessed and they be blessed but then that generational blessing continues. Amen. Both man. for you and them. Amen. Amen. Amen to that, man. I man, it's 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 so beautiful to hear you speak on that. Uh man, I'm covered in tattoos. All my arms, my legs, man, everybody that's seen me in person knows. Mm -hmm. I'm tatted up, tat, tat, tatted up. And on my right shoulder, I have only God can judge me. Um, and so what I realized is a long time ago, basketball quote, and it says, from Michael Jordan, some people wish it happened. Some people want for it to happen, and other people make it happen. If you want to connect with people, if you want to learn, if you want to go be inside, you have to go, and go is an action word. Mm -hmm. Y'all know I say go, God only. Yeah. Well, guess what? God is a God of action. Amen. All right. So you got to go. You got to go only. You got you, you got to God only. Well, take lessons from what God is saying and go. Move. Pick up your feet. Mm -hmm. Success loves speed. Slow feet don't eat. No, go ahead. <laughs> you got to go. Got to go. It, whether it's whether it's going into a silent place, whether it's going to actually learn what it is that you say you're gonna learn, whether it's going to make that connection with somebody, boy, Zach on here preaching. If y'all not listening to what Zach saying, man. If y'all not looking at me smiling and nodding my head and shaking my dreads, boy, Zach got me going this morning to God. God mm -hmm. only daily. P-O-D. Man, I'm going. I'm going somewhere. Whether I'm going to my side place, yes, godly thoughts plus godly moves. You right. If I'm not going somewhere, then I'm going to sit down somewhere. How about that? Go and ahead. when I'm, down, I'm going to connect somebody, I'm going to learn something. I'm going to add some value to my life because when I go to the next place, I got to add value to somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. I can't just be going just to go. You going nowhere. Nowhere can always be found. That's easy. Yeah. You can always go nowhere. Where are you going that you bring value? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Zach's screen. I see a couple white boys behind him. I promise you they won't be anybody at the end of the day. Because <laughs> he's going he gonna to learn something. He going he gonna to write down something. See, I'm not going to sit here and act like, I'm perfect, prim, and proper. No. I'm a country boy, surface city slicker. I'm going to talk how I'm going to talk because if I didn't go anywhere, then I wouldn't be going anywhere. If I didn't sit down in silence, boy, sit yourself down somewhere. If I didn't go and sit down somewhere, listen, I wouldn't have learned anything. I yeah. wouldn't be able to connect with people. Mm -hmm. I know my mama will probably be mad at me 
for just allowing myself to speak the way I'm speaking right now. But mm -hmm. I'm going to speak in intellect, whether my country accent comes out, whether some Ebonics comes out, some slang mm -hmm. comes out, whether my words are enunciated, pronounced, however, my man, oh my gosh, my life. Father would say, enunciate your words, pronounce it like this. She still does it with my daughter, with my nieces, my nephews. Right. But here's the thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to be working towards it. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, it connects. Is there somebody out there? They don't want this astute me that is um, speaking so properly that uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to say. No, no, that ain't always going to connect with everybody. <laughs> you got to be you and being you is what's going to connect with people in the spirit as well as just by yourself. Mm -hmm. so that what I want to, to share with people that rewatch this that are watching right now is learn how to just be you. Yeah. Speak to yourself, get by yourself, and learn how to just be you. I've been growing my hair for almost two years. I've had people tell me, shave my beard. And you know what? As I've let this beard grow, as I've let my hair grow, I've had more success, more opportunities, more mm -hmm. doors opening. As I've got more tattoos, I've had more folks that's like, hey, we want you. The mm -hmm. one that looks like shouldn't be qualified. Mm -hmm. Got qualified for an opportunity to come speak to some folk about being qualified. It don't matter. Yeah. It don't matter who you are. What matters is, like Zach said, your heart. Man, with that, Zach, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you. You know me, and you can keep going mm -hmm. all day. Oh, no, man. Man. no, man, it's, it's a blessing to hear, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that I think that you really tapped into is that, you know, and, and we're, we're really kind of breaking down just to kind of see where, where we are in, in, in going into a conclusion is, is that, you know, it, it starts with their seasons of prayer, their seasons of, of, of being used and, and, um, and those seasons that we're talking about are, are you know, the silent times, you know, when, when you've got to get alone with God and you've got to hear from him. Jesus did that. He, he Again, he says, my yoke is easy because I've been an example to you. Paul says, I've been an example to you. They took time to be alone. Uh, Paul had to kind of been forced that time alone, I think, through prison. But, <laughs> you know, hey, God, God works in mysterious ways. You know, he might he might be getting you alone, you know, in, in, in a in a awkward situation but you know he's still got you alone you got to take those and you got to recognize that, that and i'm sure he recognized okay this is a season that i can't minister directly to people as a as a mentor i have to you know i have to write I, i'm gonna have to connect through letters I'm, but i'm gonna have to connect to god on a more personal level and i think that's probably the time that he had the most most probably the most connection with god because all he could rely on was 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 the lord um, and you're going to find those moments where you are you are put into a place where, you know, it, it, it's evident that, OK, this is a season of silence. I need to take that time. Then there's the season of learning where you're going through processes and procedures and and and, you know, learning, you know, you know, 
how to minister or or your gift you're practicing your 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 you've got a mentor or you're reading the word but you're learning and then comes the connection part and and you brought up Andrew you brought up the go there's the go factor there's the there's the great commission is what we call it yeah. of Christ which he says go go out into the world you know yeah. do the things that I've yeah. done the things that I've done greater are you going to do than what I've done that's that's where where you know I, I I kind of leaned more into to the spirit filled life is that is that I've got to believe that what Jesus said is yes and amen it's true and that and that when he said these things you shall do also and greater things I I I heavily lean into that when when I'm doing ministry and and connecting but you know again going to that great commission and the word commission is is there's there's two beneficial words to commission but the the first one and, and the one that Christ is referring to is it is an instruction it's a command it's a duty it's given to a group of people that's why it's called the great commission the reason it's a great commission is because it's a great group it's a big it's a it's a vast number of people generation of people again going back to what we talked about earlier this morning mm -hmm. is is that you know timothy was pulled in through a generational blessing a generational word of knowledge understanding you know uh, uh, uh believing people we are also a part of that commission that he spoke that verbally to a group of 12 maybe maybe a plenty more whoever was was there at that moment when christ you know proclamated go go out into the world make disciples of all all nations although we weren't physically there we are spiritually there again that's why it's called the great commission it is something that we are all commissioned to and um and it you know and and it's something that that we need to hear adhere to as 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 believers or those of us that 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 do believe and want to uh increase our connection with others um but we have to we have to abide by that great commission and, and, and say okay lord where are you sending me today is it you know or who you who are you moving me to speak to and to really take action on those opportunities to make the con connection with others and um, sometimes it's as easy as uh, and I would challenge everybody that's listening this morning that, you know, we, we are really prone to say, I'll pray for you. There's something that's going on in somebody's life. You'll say, I'll pray for you. A better way to connect with people is to connect to God with people and to go immediately and say, hey, let's 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 pray about this. Do you mind if I pray for you? And I understand that for some people, that's extremely awkward uh, and can be painful. It can be scary. But I encourage you that the Lord will see you through. Hey, I don't know what to say when, you know, Pastor, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm with somebody and, and, and I want to pray for them, but I don't, don't know how. If you'll take the first step in saying, hey, you know what, why don't we pray? I guarantee you, I promise you, the Holy Spirit will lead you in all things. He will give you the words to speak. You just open your heart and say, Lord, you know, I, I'm here. I'm available. Use me. And I promise you he will. I promise you he will. And I encourage you to, to wait on him. Move when he says move. He says go into all the world. Go into all the world. Um, and, and again, you know, continue to learn. But don't be just a learner only. Be a doer. Be somebody that applies what you've learned in that season of learning, because there are seasons of learning. Apply what you've learned to other people, and you shall be blessed. Amen? Amen, man. You know, talking about silence learning and uh, as we go into this close, man, you, oh, my gosh, you, bro. <laughs> oh man, I love you, Zach. Oh, I love you. You always, you always. Amen. There was a time 
where I was moving in silence. And I felt like my prayers were unheard. And I was running in the street, getting arrested, messing around, doing all this nonsense. And then I finally started hearing the word, the Lord's word again in my ear. Mm-hmm. And I and I was I was taking in what was being said to me. And at first I was just hearing. Mm-hmm. But then I really started listening. And I'm like, man, okay. So God, you're gonna use all of this ugliness that's on me, all of this nastiness that's on me, all of this stuff I've been through. Lord, you really gonna use this for some good? God said, shut up and listen. I said, dang God, you ain't gotta tell me to shut up. I mean, I'm, I'm, you talking, I'm trying to talk back. He said, don't talk back, just be quiet, be silent. I said, you sound like them old folks in the South. Okay, fine. I'm going to be quiet, but if you say something else like that, I might say something back. He said, shut up. I said, okay, all right, I'm going to shut up. You still ain't listening. I said, okay, fine. I'm I'm, going to lock it up and throw away the key. All right. He said, finally. I got one that's going to okay. Then he started talking to me. And he said, go be fishers of men. Mm-hmm. So I don't like fishing. Take yeah. too long. I, fishing I got to sit out there in a hot sun on this boat. I probably ain't even going to catch nothing. He said, shut up. I said, okay. He said, go catch at least one. I said, man. Why I'm going to sit out here all day just to catch one? He said, boy, I'm trying to teach you something. If you just sit down and shut up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I, are you telling me to shut up? All right, I'm going to sit down. Do mm-hmm. I at least go water in the cooler? He said, no, sit on the hot boat. Go catch you one. You're going to have to sit out in the sun. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, catch some heat. Catch some heat. Man, why I had that? Throw it out there. Then all of a sudden, one fish. Hold on, wait. I caught, I caught one. Oh, yeah, I told you to be quiet. I'm trying to learn you something. It's called patience. I'm trying to mm-hmm. learn you something. Because in mm-hmm. silence, you learn patience. You start to understand. You start to get some knowledge, some wisdom about you. He said, throw it again. I said, all right, I'm going to. Uh, do it. Oh, sna- hey, God, I caught another one. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on. You mean I'm I'm connecting? I'm ca- I'm 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 starting to catch something. Hold on, right. wait a wait a minute. So so then he said, I got a net that I want you to cast down, Andrew. Mm-hmm. Andrew, cast down your nets one mm-hmm. more time. Watch this one more time. Oh, cast down that net. Man, I ain't not. Whoa, hold on. My boat almost, my boat almost started sinking. I, I was catching so much. I started catching so much. I said, whoa. See, when you get silent mm-hmm. and you really pay attention to what God has for you, then you start learning. What what came from that silence mm-hmm. will help you to connect with others. It will help you to catch others. It will help you to bring others in mm-hmm. to your circle. It will have others come to your net of influence, i.e. your network. Mm-hmm. It will help you to grow so much 
that it's like, oh my gosh, this is so much. Like, how did I even get all of this that is helping me to get full, but then also it's going to help others get full. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see how that works? Yeah. Wait a minute. We've been out here in silence all day, God. I'm mm -hmm. throwing up. I'm trying to catch me just one and keep throwing it. Keep throwing it. I'm going to teach you something. I'm going to, like the old folks used to tell me, I'm going to learn you mm -hmm. something. I'm going to learn you something because I'm trying to tell you something. I'm going to learn you something. Now cast down your nets. Mm -hmm. Cast down your nets. And you will catch, you will connect. Amen. And that's a beautiful thing when you put all three together. Mm -hmm. It's a silent prayer. Then you listen. And eventually, when you take the action, mm -hmm. throw that throw, throw that rod one more time, cast down that net, you will connect with people mm -hmm. in so many different ways in your life and it will help you to grow. I mean, I don't even know how I even came up with that analogy. I just, I, I like reading about me in the Bible. So mm -hmm. I just, I was thinking about fishers of men. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, you said something that really, really was pretty profound, honestly. It was the, it was the, the net equals your network. I was like, man, that's good, man. I, I got, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna have to take that someday, man. I'm gonna, that's gonna be a part of a message one day. Uh, right. You know, your, your net is your net worth, and it also becomes your net worth, you know, and and um, you know, it, or at least at least heavenly, you know, it's it's something that 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 you've you've you know you've produced value for somebody's life, and that that value is worth. It, it brings net worth worth to you and and that connection brings a network and you're absolutely right and it, it's 100 important for us to make those connections and um and and follow that systematic rule of, that there's seasons for each of those specific silence learning and then of course connection and so I, i'm i'm blessed to to and, and honored to to be a part of today's you know uh podcast group session whatever you want to call it I'm, I'm thankful to be part of break uh you know breakfast of champions and so it's it's a it's a great learning and doing opportunity definitely man definitely um with that man i know i know we got about three minutes but i think that's that's a great um spot for us to to really close out um and prayer and really just bless people to go on their 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 day um so uh dear lord uh we come to you knowing that when two or more come together in your name that you are it's, and we pray that you help us get silent to open up our spiritual ears to learn, our spiritual eyes to see, our spiritual minds to receive your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding, our spiritual bodies to feel, our spiritual hearts to receive, our spiritual souls to be rooted deeply within you, learning that without you, we are nothing. With you, we are. Help us to connect with you, God, so that we can connect with others and we can go out and make disciples, bring back the lost so that they may be found and qualified in your eyes because we know that we were not qualified for the position that we are in, but without you, then we would not be here with you. 
We are here. Thank you so much for everything that you do, for guiding us, for helping us when we couldn't help ourselves, for helping us as we help ourselves, and for helping us as we go out and connect with others and help them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We love y'all. This has been another episode of Breakfast of Champions. We are on every morning, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Uh, the men are on. Uh, Mr. Harlan Bell is on Tuesdays. Me and Zach's Sons of Thunder are on Thursdays. Uh, get it, eat, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the women are on. But please, get your sons. Get your husbands. Get your nephews. Get your nieces. Get your sisters. Get your cousins. Get the ugliest ones that you can find because we take the ugly and turn them to pretty. We are the breakfast of champions. We are champion. We are going to win. We are winning. Let's go. We love you. Come back tomorrow, 6 a.m. See y'all later. God bless you. Love you guys. Bye.